Hi. Thank you for joining the Future of Office Space Security with Castle Systems. My name is Nikhil Shinoy, and right now, Castle is having conversations with thousands of companies who are looking to us to help make their security systems safer, smarter, and more convenient to meet the needs of their employees for today and the future. What we're sharing on this webinar today are the ideas that we're talking with them about and the edge that you're looking for to really help make your space more personalized for your occupants and grow in security. So that encapsulates what we're looking to do. And the first thing I'd like to do today is help, uh, help you see who's on the phone with us. So just a few housekeeping notes before we continue. This presentation will be recorded and materials are made available on our website. So with that, I'd like to introduce Paul Warner, Castle's West Coast General Manager. Paul? Yeah. Hi, thanks Nikhil. Uh, so just wanted to touch base real quick on me so you guys know who I am. Um, I started in this industry, the electronic security industry, when I was 19 years old, which as you can tell by my picture is a long time ago. Um, and over the many years, uh, I've had this fascination with how uh, electronic security makes folks more secure and how uh, that helps folks get into their spaces and basically allows the electronic security allows them to go about their workplace day to day without being encumbered with worrying about, you know, their physical security. Um, you know, that fascination over the years has turned into a passion. And through that, I've been able to work with many Fortune 100 companies, uh, a lot of large property ownership firms, and also small property ownership firms uh, to help them realize, you know, their electronic security vision for their buildings and properties. And since 2009, I've been here with Castle. And uh, just a quick note on Castle, we can flip to the next slide, Nikhil. A quick note on Castle, um, there's a lot of different things noted here, but the one thing I wanted to highlight is that we're, we're working today with about 10,000 sites in the continental US and even internationally. That is, if you're in um, some parts of Europe and also in Australia. Um, and we're making buildings and the folks who occupy those buildings mo more secure. Um, so we have uh, the largest managed service, uh, security service firm probably in the US. And then also uh, we've been recognized in our industry for many of the things uh, like the SDM award and UL listings and five diamond certifications. Many of those things may not mean anything to you, but what it means to us is that we're, we're a highly recognized leader in this industry. So let's talk about a time long ago, or maybe not so long ago for some of us, um, in the year 2000. Now, back then, the technology was a lot different than it is today. You can see some of it looks dated just by the, the picture here, but at the time, many of that uh, many of those things were cutting edge, like the BlackBerry, being able to see your emails on your phone. That was revolution. Uh, that was a revolutionary concept in the 2000s. You know, we had CD-ROMs, which uh, I think back then we were producing. I don't know how many of the, how many actually CD-ROMs were we producing back then, Nikhil? I think it was around 900 million <laughs> per year. 900 million. <laughs> we probably produce in this year, probably nine. So uh, we're not using media anymore. And you see that a lot of the technologies are just dated. They're static. Um, they're, they're specific to the building. Um, and, and take a look at this worker of 2000. Uh, he's looking for his red stapler. He just finished a bunch of TPS reports. And He's stuck there with, with his system of the 2000s, not being able to, to take advantage of, of the technology of today. So what does this old technology premise-based system require? So it's very heavy IT-centric uh, systems. Um, understanding how to use them is, is difficult. Um, a lot of the technology of the 2000s were, were designed for engineer or in, in, installer-based thinking, 
and it wasn't very user friendly not not so much for buildings not so much for tenants within those buildings and those systems really didn't take advantage of uh, like the internet so today systems are internet based they're using the cloud um, which um, allows less constraints on businesses and employees alike it allows more innovation um, now those systems for the day were, were very innovative, but as we know, um, the world has changed. Hey, thanks, Paul. So just to kind of build on that and, and bring focus to what really changed everything, it really was the cloud. And, and so what, change, what the cloud did was kind of take the Internet to the next level in terms of how easily we can connect, what we understand, and what we can actually do at our fingertips and from our desks or away from our desks. So for example, one of the most prominent cloud examples I like to think of every day is Uber. So in the past, you'd be standing out in the rain calling for a cab. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get stolen right before you get into it. But now, with that extra connection and, and using the cloud, it's personalized. You connect directly with the person who's going to drive you around. You don't even have to take out cash or a credit card or bother calculating a tip. So it's not just slightly better, but with a little configuration beforehand, the entire process, the entire cloud-based process, and the experience is, is just vastly improved. So cloud enablement, again, made everything better and enabled these new, better capabilities. So, you know, again, a lot of this stuff is taken for granted now in your personal life, but Uber is at your fingertips. It knows who you are. You can see what you need to see, and the entire end-to-end -end process is seamless and well-supported. Security is going in much the same direction. So your systems today and in the future should be at your fingertips, know who you are, see, uh, show you what you can control and what you need to know, and again, from end to end, the entire experience is seamless and well supported. So in our own systems, in Castle systems, a service person or engineer in DC can troubleshoot any system anywhere. So they can instantly log in and see details for one out of millions of users. New connections from the person and system and what they can do is just a world of difference. So what does this mean for you, for the property, facility, and office managers of today? Let's talk about the technologies that are enabling that security experience in the office of the future. So I think the biggest and most central uh, technology today and, and what really makes the cloud um, deliverable is mobile. We really are seeing the shift and, and we're in the middle of this wave of going from the old way to the new mobile era. The phone really is the new key. For the past decade, there have been a lot more mobile phones than people in the world. So what does this look like? What does this mobile-enabled security system really look like? Let me use myself as an example here. When I drove into the office this morning, the parking gate just opened for me without me having to stop and roll down my window and hold my arm out in the rain. I was holding my coffee and speaker notes for my webinar on the way into the office and was able to walk right through the secure door without having to put my stuff down and fish for a card. So it just automatically unlocked for me. And what does that do for you? What else is going on there? Even though that's the obvious experience, there's a lot more to it than that. So the hands-free convenience and leaving the phone in my pocket is great. But on top of that, I'm less likely to use my phone, to, to lose my phone, than I am to lose a key. So, you know, it's safer in that regard, too, that I'll have less random keys floating around in my building. On top of that, the signal is dynamic. So with an encrypted phone-to-door signal, the same signal is never used twice. So you can't sniff a static RFID card, for example, and repeat the signal to get through a door. It's dynamic. And also, a personal panic button, as you can see in the slide here, extends uh, the, the panic button experience from the perimeter of the building to each person in your office. So if anything goes down in your building, and the, I have the panic button on my phone to call for help right away. Yeah, and you know, I was talking to a, um, a company um, recently, actually, uh, and they were having issues with having to lock down their building. Um, before, the director of security would have to drive across town, get to the building, um, manage through a crowd, get into the building, and then lock it down. Um, so what I talked to him about was, you know, the, this device that we carry in our pocket 
is, is a powerful computing device and can be leveraged for so many things. And the one thing we talked about doing was having a way where he could just press a button on his phone and lock down his building. So today, that's what he's doing. Instead of driving across town, weeding through a potentially dangerous situation to get to the building and then lock it down from within the building, he's doing it from the safety and the comfort of his office across town just by pressing a button on his phone. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So what really drives that capability? How are we doing this that we can use a specific phone to open up a specific building across town? And it really comes down to having all of your systems, especially security, being data driven. So today, data is an ingredient for better understanding. How the data is collected and reported is what really matters to you so you can actually use it. Whether it's to unlock a door across town, you know exactly which door to unlock, or if you're talking about um, unused credentials, as, as the example here. So insights and information truly drive better actions, leading to a safer and more efficient operation. So what you can see here on the right is a sample report that shows access cards that haven't been used in a while. So by having that information at your fingertips, you're able to drill down and see maybe if there are certain tenants that are having a lot of uh, cards issued that are floating around out there, or find specific individuals who have uh, not used their cards in a long time and make sure that your system stays fresh and the access is modern, meaning that people who should have access have access and vice versa. Those who shouldn't have access can't get in anymore. So while data drives these actionable insights and, and can be leveraged across the organization, what's really amazing and what's coming tomorrow kind of like hailing a cab, is how that data is actually, is actually turned into a process. So a great example of that is, is visitor management. And what really drives it is just that end-to-end -end frictionless experience. So instead of manually figuring out who visited when or, or having to go through a manual book and sign-in process and waiting in line, we have technologies that can enable a much better process. So, Previously, you'd coordinate with the building and visitors wait in line while each of them were manually processed. Whereas today, visitors can be pre-processed by Outlook email, receive a barcode on their phone, so it's almost like going to the, to the airport, and they can just check into the building and receive their badge automatically for a better, faster experience. So in addition to that, to that phone call that the person can make to the tenant, the host can actually receive a digital confirmation that their guest has arrived. So again, it's, it's a more seamless experience. And on top of that, there's just more frictionless management of the system. So instead of having to comb through old records to answer questions like, when was the last time Brian Jones from ABC Company visited? Or who are my most frequent visitors and who are they visiting? Or who are my hosts that have the most visitors? That data is now aggregated and easily accessible. And on top of all that, the processes are just better. So in the past, when guest passes would be issued or you had to issue a card with the same access as a CEO to a visitor, now with digital credentials, you understand which credentials are outstanding and they can expire sooner. So you don't have to be stuck with a rigid schedule or anything like that. So overall, the office space of tomorrow has better security and just a better overall experience for everyone. And there's some more technologies that are making a difference. So I'll pass it back to Paul to talk about one more here. Yeah, so in the future, and even now, um, a lot of the ways that we interface with our security is visual. So we're looking at cameras, and, and the experience of yesterday was, you know, uh, analog cameras recording onto a device maybe in one part of the building where you would go and you would posthumously look at events. Today we're able to take uh, that camera, convert it to digital, and push that information out um, and that information can reside in the cloud and be pushed out to a device that sits in your pocket. So now you have visual understanding of your location wherever you are. Um, and these, these uh, cameras now can be smart. So we can give it uh, the sensing uh, ability to determine is it a person, is it a vehicle, and, and make a determination based on some criteria that we set up front to send that information to you, uh, you know, real time or very close to real time. 
that's all good news because cameras are now cheaper than they've ever been. So we're going to see a prolifer uh, prolification of cameras into spaces um, more as time goes on. And, and the big question is, how do you utilize that? Um, how do you tie it all together with your security and how do you make it easy to use? Um, so, like for instance, I have a, co a customer that has 89 cameras and about a 300 square foot space, 300,000 square foot space, and they use it to count people that come in and out of their space. Um, now what they can do with that data is, is up to them. They can send that data to a building management system. They can send it to, you know, the front desk, the guard, if they if they need to know an occupancy of, of the building is not supposed to go above a certain threshold. Basically, it's up to them what they imagine they want to do with that data, but the data is now there to, uh, for them to use. Um, back in the day, I uh, used to have to tie these old analog systems to an intranet, which would be a large infrastructure within a business. And then you, you could tie multiple buildings together, but you had to have this tremendous infrastructure in place. And IT uh, pros that work in those buildings really don't like uh, cameras riding on the network because it eats up bandwidth and bandwidth at that time was very constrained. But today, we're just plugging these cameras directly into the cloud. And the connectivity is much easier. The infrastructure is much more robust and massive. We're able to tie all that data together dynamically at any time, anywhere. Um, so for instance, you know, I can look at my office from across town easily. Or if someone's outside of my office when they shouldn't be, my video system knows that. And it sends me a live alert so I can look and see who it is and deal with that issue right then on the spot, wherever I'm at. Yeah, cool. So a lot of what Paul is talking about is because these systems are connected. So it's not just about these kind of point solutions, but customers have applied this technology in a few ways. So let me give an example of how these connections are helping them. So disparate systems can grow out of shape easily, whether it's personnel systems, alarm systems, video, access. So now the security system is integrated with the enterprise identity system, a single source. Video, elevators, and visitors can be integrated with access control, which enables a better experience for everyone, some of the things that Paul and I have actually been talking about. So to get specific, for example, these connections are happening between visitor systems and elevators. So now, a guard can allow visitor access from a tablet to only a floor that that visitor is going to. The guard no longer has to get up and leave their desk and key somebody into the elevator and push a button while other people are waiting in line. It's just a better experience. And you know that, that example that Paul gave earlier, somebody unlocking a, uh, unlocking a door from across town, I actually heard the same thing here from a suburban um, property management company where their CEO was trying to get into the office on MLK Day but didn't have their credential with them. So before, in years past, he, the, the gentleman I was talking to had to actually drive across town and let his boss in the door. But today, this, at this past MLK Day, he was able to just do it from his phone. So another example of these, these kind of connected systems um, would be between access control and building management systems where the identity portion of access, we know who entered a building and when, we can use that information to optimize comfort and efficiency. So from a leasing perspective, how many unique visitors do I have to each building every day across my portfolio? Or how do I think about whether I want to use hoteling or designated space or some mix of the two? A lot of those leasing decisions are, can be strongly influenced by, by aggregating and, and looking at access data in new ways. Um, and building management systems increasingly can use new and different types of inputs. So when you know that a certain number of people have, are in the space, you can adjust comfort accordingly. Alternatively, if there aren't that many people in the space, you know, you can save a lot of money by, by, uh, by turning things off as opposed to sticking to, to the schedules, which are the best practice of today. And in the future, there are even more new connections that can be made. So for example, human resources or HR systems like Microsoft Active Directory can be integrated directly with access control systems. So one source can control all your credentials uh, user profiles and privileges, 
So that way you don't have to worry about deleting somebody from HR, but having them still have access to your building, for example. It's just one authoritative way to kind of have everything managed centrally. And it really does just make it easier for you as a manager. So the office of the future, again, to kind of wrap it up, is simply a more connected, better place to work. And, and when you talk about a better place to work, it's important to understand who is in that space. So I, I pride myself on actually being one of the world's oldest millennials. And what the millennial generation kind of brings with it as we become the majority in the workforce in the next few years here are higher expectations and lower barriers to technology adoption. So taking advantage of this higher participation rate not only makes the workplace more valuable, but it improves productivity and adds new connections to the workplace itself and can have cultural benefits as well to companies that adopt better technology. So what are some of these expectations that we have? I mean, in, in my own example, no matter where I'm traveling, I can instantly yell what restaurants are nearby and what people think about them. And I can look up their menu, so I don't have to wonder if I, if I want anything specific, I can actually find it. In addition to that, I, I don't have to worry about giving or asking for directions. I just give people an address or even just the name of a place in a town, and you can automatically navigate your way there or take an Uber and, and everybody meet there. So, you know, that, that's kind of scratching the surface of it, but, but what it really boils down to is that my mobile phone is my world, and the world is going to be personalized for me. That's the expectation, and that's the construct for the office of the future. So the key is to make sure that we adapt accordingly, because as Paul is about to go into right now, the threats just keep coming with this added flexibility. Yeah, and so threats, obviously, they're evolving, and, you know, the technology is also evolving. And, and we talk about all the cool things that we can do, like looking at cameras from across town and looking at, you know, uh, processing visitors and doing all that. All of that is cool. All of that makes us more safe, but some of that might be reaching out in the future for some of us. So I wanted to go over a few things that we can take away today that are practical, um, that you can, you can implement you know, right at the end of hearing this uh, conference, you can start the work of implementing that. So let's talk about the first one. So just recently, um, there was a massive cyber attack, and this was uh, Q4 of last of 2016, October actually. Um, and what happened was, folks, these hackers were able to enter into uh, networks through cameras or devices on, on a video network that had default passwords. So those that changed their passwords made themselves, you know, <laughs> made themselves uh, able to, to bypass this particular attack. But, but if you think about a network video system, you've got maybe 100 cameras, let's say, or let's take a smaller one. Let's just say 16 cameras, and you have a network recorder, and you have an archiver, I mean, potentially with a 16-camera system, you've got over 20 um, username and passwords to maintain because every device that touches the um, touches the cloud or touches the uh, network has has a password. So um, that's something we definitely need to be aware of. Um, let's take a look at the next uh, potential threat. Yeah, sure. So again, we keep touching this, that you want to understand who's in your building, but I think it's equally important to understand that you want to keep these potential threats out. So whether you consider more or less in, in the workplace or what's happening with workplace violence, what's always true is that understanding who is in your building can help you monitor and reduce a potentially large risk to your organization. So as managers, we owe it to our employees and to our, our tenants and people to have a safe workplace. And what this Sodexo report last year found out was that seven out of ten organizations have either insufficient or no programs in place to combat workplace violence. So having the right access control, while, while some people think it's just a, a you know a kind of a check the box grudge type of purchase where you want to mm -hmm. unlock a door uh, electronically, what's really important is that you want to make sure that you have adequate physical barriers to unwanted actors entering your space. Now that said, you know, Paul, I think a lot of this stuff is actually done by insiders, so you want to understand that as well. Yeah. So 
on the next slide, um, let's let's jump forward to that and we can talk a little bit about this. So you you definitely want to have a savvy IT protocol. We talked a little bit about that with the camera vulnerability. There's so many threats on an IT network that, that your IT pros are thinking about. But you also need to have a savvy physical security protocol. So a way to lock down the actual physical space. Um, for instance, if someone's trying to use a card to go into the records room and they're not allowed to use it, but they do that multiple times, you want to be able to understand that information. And you want to get it, you know, in, back to you in some way that you can understand what's going on. Um, those types of behaviors, you can get ahead of them if you have real-time information. And then you're dealing with a, a potential threat ahead of the curve as opposed to reacting to the aftermath of somebody stealing a laptop and that particular laptop had a bunch of intellectual capital on it or walking out with a physical file that's supposed to be um, in only in your file room. All right, so what can we do today to make, uh, to be better off? Well, number one, you know, as I kind of alluded to many times, update your passwords. You can do that today. Go into your video system and update your passwords. Um, that's number one. Number two, you know, enable a mobile system platform. Your system should have that available to you and it should be complimentary. Um, you know, number three, reduce your vulnerability by closing out unused access credentials. That basically means you know, who who has a credential that hasn't used it in a while? Run that report and and do an internal audit of folks that are using badges to come in your building. You know, enable yourself with emergency lockdown capabilities so you can just hit that button on your phone or on your desktop or wherever you're at and lock down your building. Uh, and then request a security audit plan and determine what needs you need to take to make sure your system is compliant with future upgrades and has the ability to grow as your, your needs grow. Thanks, Paul. So just to kind of summarize, the, the future of office space security really is about solving some of these problems for you. So all the issues that we brought up that were around in the past are outlined on this table with how they're going to change in the future. So again, you know, this will be available after the presentation if you want to go on our website and take a look. Um, but we have articles about each of these problems and different case studies and, um, and, and suggestions on how to address them for your system going forward. We also recommend that you talk to your security provider and make sure you're, you're taking full use of the data and capabilities available to you. So again, to kind of hit on that final key theme, what I want everybody to take away from all this is that the future of office space security is intensely personal. So in five years, you should expect your garage to automatically open for you. Your office should really be intelligent enough to know you're in there and adapt accordingly to your preferences for lighting and for comfort. In addition to that, you should have new insights from all the data that will automatically just make the environment safer, smarter, and more convenient. So elevators will be faster and called for you, and getting to your desk and moving around your building will be more efficient as well. So all this leads, all these kind of items and all this future um, um, development really does lead to more productive and more efficient environments, saving you money, delivering an understanding of usage patterns, automatic reporting and streamlined visitor and vendor processing with better, faster, more convenient controls. So the future of office space security is personalized for both you and your people and just a safer, smarter, and more convenient experience for everyone. So thank you for joining us today. We wish you a safe and prosperous future. Uh, we encourage you to follow Castle or reach out to us directly if you have any questions. Um, thanks, and take care. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, and thanks to everybody.